Hello and welcome, my fellow modeling and tabletop gaming enthusiasts, to the Mediocre Modeler Show. We've got a little bit of a different view here today. We're going to do something a little bit different. Sort of a 100 subscriber special, you could say. I think we're at 105 subscribers now. I mean, I, wow, after not quite a year, 100 people. That's, yeah, pretty cool for just a tiny little hobby channel like this. So what we're going to do today, I'm going to give you guys a little tour of Mediocre Modeling Studios. You've seen, you know, the bench a little bit. You've seen a little bit of the spray booth, but now you're going to get to see the whole, the whole thing in all of its glory. So without any further ado, let's go ahead and uh, take a look on around the shop. All right. So you'll find that I call this my shop. It's kind of my man cave. It's the attic of my house. So here is the workbench where all of the magic, quote unquote, magic happens. Um, you guys have seen just little bits and pieces of it, but this is the actual bench in its entirety. My dad and I built this about 14 years ago. It's about six feet long, about two and a half feet deep, roughly. And as you can see, this didn't really get cleaned when I cleaned up the other day. All of the paint racks and storage hutches, uh, paper towel dispenser, those are all from Hobby Zone. Um, underneath, I've actually got an old filing cabinet from my office. They're going to throw it out, but it makes for great storage. And we've got sort of like this bonus little storage area over there for all my solvents and airbrush thinners and stuff. Um, currently on commission, I haven't really started, I've just started assembling for a buddy of mine, some call to arms stuff for Elder Scrolls. Some unfinished miniatures up there, my Kickstarter exclusive Mel the Terrain Tutor back there. Uh, personal stuff, I've got two figures of my own, uh, from the Stormcloak starter for call to arms, and then some squad of marines for bolt action, and then this one is, was finished a while ago, and he's sort of the, uh, the reference figure. Over here, we've got a bookcase with my Bolt Action K47 Germans, another Elder Scrolls model for my buddy. Miscellaneous projects, um, Gazgol, some Stormcast, and then a, a Knight Armager. Some Kazarik Forgers for Free Blades, two tank turrets. I've got the alternate turrets on them right now, so they're just stuck there. Uh, World War I Germans for Blood and Valor. World War I Americans for Blood and Valor. There's a cheeky killer for... That is the... The Whistler for Don't Look Back, and then some Trillion Seekers for Free Blades as well. Then we've got Miscellaneous Terrain, um, some stone walls, fences from Black Sight Studios, a bunch of assembled but not yet primed Marines, and then we've got some more Bolt Action K47 stuff that's all been primed. So we've got an SSMG team, a Toad. Uh, I can't even remember what it's called now for K-47 there in the back. Got a 57mm anti-tank gun for the Americans and then a KFZ-251. I, I honestly cannot remember what those are called now and it kind of bothers me. But anyway, I've got books down here. All the old Hor Horus Heresy books, a couple of old Forge World Imperial Armor books, Aeronautica, Flames of War, Call to Arms, a bunch of uh, stuff like that. And then I've got various things in this like decals. Uh, just, just strip, plas stock, plastic, various other things. Over here behind the, literally this, I used to sit in this chair at my office. I get a lot of old, worn out stuff for my office. So that's what I sit in for my uh, workbench now. I've got sort of my spray booth area. So there's the actual spray booth. Vents out that window right back there. Got my compressor down there. Um, all like the spray varnishes and stuff, airbrushes, spray cans, Respirator, um, I probably should store that in something better, but I haven't been doing that much airbrushing lately. Uh, the two airbrushes that I use the most here are on the end, so we've got the Renegade Chrome, and then we've got the Harder and Steenbeck Infinity down there. And then up above here, we've got my Star Trek model collection, as well as the custom Lego Ted Lasso sign that my kids made me for my birthday with custom-made minifigs. So, okay... The Abe class here in the front is 1,000. I can't remember the name of that class. Asuka, maybe, 1 1,000th. Excelsior is at 1 1,000th scale. Um, the Akira class USS Thunderchild there is 1,400th. Tamiya quarter scale Birdcage Corsair. And then these three back here are, I believe, 1 1,000th. No, 2,500 scale. This whole shelf is 1,400th. So Phobos scale, we've got no birth class, a Corvette, the USS Equinox, USS Titan, 
the appearance Titan makes in Lower Decks is my favorite by far. Get the little dust thing out of the way. Defiant with some Peregrine class fighters. We've got the Saber class USS Jaeger back there. The Norway class USS Budapest. These are all very dusty. I apologize. The NX-01, of course, and then the Steamrunner class USS Appalachia. Um, so this is all my bits for 30k and other miscellaneous stuff. There's extra sprues in there. I forgot to ship back to a client. What we'll be doing when he sends his next job. Oh, I've got a bunch of wooden scenics flocks and stuff in there. That's all miscellaneous storage again. Here's sort of my shipping area, shipping supplies. So lots of padding, bubble wrap, foam, packing peanuts, and a few boxes. Um, and these totes here is all terrain stuff <clears throat> of all makes and models, all kinds of good stuff in there, some terrain making stuff. And then over here, we've got, again, storage for a lot of, a lot of stuff. So got to have a hairdryer, especially if you're working with resin. So I got my wife's old hairdryer. We've got Flames of War, uh, Black Sight Studio stuff. So Lunar and Don't Look Back, sort of like my alternate miscellaneous dice bag this awesome cleaver measuring tool um a lot of other stuff so my solar auxilia stormcast stuff free blades blood and valor mechanicum for 30k random stuff and magnets and all kinds of other random stuff got bolt action comes with 47 both germans and americans we've got um two for totes or two totes for paint so that bottom one is citadel gw forge rolled mp3 the top one is all Vallejo, MIG, Army Painter, AK, anything like that. And then down here we've got stuff for Gloom Trench. I've got a Static Grass applicator in that one. That's sort of my flock box just to catch everything when I'm, when I'm doing that. Uh, miscellaneous historical stuff I'm never going to use. <laughs> like Russians, Australians, Italians, stuff like that. Um, and that's all like scrap wood or just strip wood. Um, we've got all of my Black Sight Studio expansions, VHS expansions. This is all random scenic supplies, more scenic supplies. Um, terrain, again, terrain stuff. So we've got texture paste, we've got leaves, static grass, some life color paint sets, um, a thing of inks, my pro acryl paint set I picked up, tufts. And then we've got stuff still in boxes. So Master and Commander, the starter set for Black Seas, still has a bunch of stuff in it. The Marines box. I think I did put the screws back in there. <laughs> and you can see, you know, I've still got stuff for like this Easy 8 hasn't even been built. The LVT2 that we did a review on not too long ago. German Infantry World War One, the Shrek Wolfen, all that stuff. Um, so I've actually built everything out of this box, but it's got all of my U.S. Marine stuff in there right now. Uh, the German starter army, I still have a lot of infantry to build. Um, so the Land Raider Crusader box is actually all just vehicle bits. I think there's actually a Razorback in that box, my Titanicus box, and miscellaneous leftover sprues. Back here, I've got some terrain stuff, miscellaneous kits. Again, stuff that I'm not going to get around to for a while. A few more Star Trek kits hiding out back there. And then over here, let's see. I think there's just miscellaneous kits in there, tokens, dyes, markers, and stuff. A hobby survival kit that I don't travel with anymore because it's just kind of a pain. Uh, again, more unbuilt kits, some started stuff, lots of bits and things. Um, an F2A3 Buffalo in quarter eight scale from Special Hobby, one of the Midway Defenders. So I've got my Sons of Horus, Aeronaut Imperialis, Ruin Storm, Ruin Storm Demons, and then all Battlefleet Gothic stuff is in there. Um, and then, of course, I also have these really cool prints that this one's been sitting. I mean, they've been sitting since the fall. These are from the one and only Bill Krauss, who actually designs some really, really awesome Star Trek models. I love Star Trek ships. That's why I have such a nice collection over there. But bought these from Bill last fall when he was doing a sale, and he even did me the honor of signing them. So I've got the Shangri-La. I've got Endurance, which is an absolutely beautiful model that he did. And then, of course, one of the thing, one of the most important ones that he had a hand in designing was the Enterprise G from Season 3 of Star Trek Picard. So, originally the Titan A, now the Enterprise G. So, I do need to get these measured and get some get some frames for them so I can hang them up and dust them off. That is, that is just shameful that I've done that. So, anyway, we got some more uh, terrain stuff back there. 
the ruined monastery. Uh, I think that's a set of battlefield walls above it. And then we've got like a, this is a TT combat. I think it's a reinforced uh, fortified checkpoint kit. Two Clash of Steel boxes, uh, my Table War carrying tray. That is all lunar terrain in there and all my miniatures and stuff. And then basically the kits that I didn't want to stick back in the abyss. So this OG Enterprise is started, but not gotten very far. That is a StarCraft Models Prometheus class. Technically the USS Prometheus. Um, Boeing SB-17. Anyone that's seen Masters of the Air... You know, that'll be kind of fun to do, except it's not the right model of B-17. And I want to do it like this, so like the Air Rescue Service. Uh, the Enterprise Refit. We've got the Enterprise A from Star Trek VI, which is actually a wedding gift from one of my cousins. We've got the Enterprise B from Star Trek Generations. And then, of course, the Enterprise E, probably my favorite back there. And then a 72nd scale RB-36H Peacemaker. It was given to me by a friend for my birthday, again, years and years ago. Spare chair that I actually want to get rid of. Over here, we've got this little hutch. More Star Trek models and Enterprise collections. So we've got the B, the C, and the E. The USS Janolan from the Next Generation episode Relic. The one that Scotty put himself in the transporter buffer for for like 75 years. Uh, an Ultramarine's Vindicator. It was actually made, by, made for me by my very good friend Jamie, also known as The Route. Um, gosh, that was like 2017, something like that. Um, that rack is a, sh or that antler is a shed that I found on my parents' property a number of years ago. We've got some miscellaneous hunting gear. Now in here, um, I've got some Sons of Horus Reavers, a, oh, I have some other stuff in there. Huh. Uh, Leviathan Dreadnought for the Sons of Horus, uh, Nightmare Batman for Night Models Batman game, and a quarter scale Tamiya bulldozer and then all my completed battlefleet gothic stuff so literally one cruiser like eight escorts seven escorts and a retribution class battleship that i labeled the uss iowa <laughs> x-wing poster or x-wing print from hoblob because why not uh, i got my futon back here with the wood duck, I've got Star Wars, Star Trek, and X-Files CCG stuff stored back there. My Forgotten Legion 30K flag that my good friend uh, Pretty gave me years ago. Got to have that on display. Um, back here is the Western Abyss. So this is like all my scale model kits, my static model kits, as well as the Dominion box. I mean, that I had to move a bunch of this stuff off of the shelves that we were just looking at stick those back here. That is basically my entire Sons of Horus army. And then my Aeronautica Imperialis stuff on top. Uh, this bookcase, we've got... This shelf is all of my K-47 bolt action stuff. Um, one of my... Oh, I won third place with this in a modeling contest in 2016. And I've got my Don't Look Back characters there. This shelf is all ultramarines that are very dusty because they haven't been used in the five and a half, almost years I've been living in this current house. Um, we've got overflow for the Solar Auxilia, as well as the Dark Angels Land Raider and Box Dread, a knight. This is all Flames of War. Most of it is American. And then from about here over is Germans. And then it's just sort of a miscellaneous catch-all. So we've got Adeptus Titanicus stuff. Um, Elder Scrolls 1 Infinity Model. Um, and then I've got my one completed French Frigate for Black Seas. And then a converted Demon Lord for Heresy. <sighs> Gotta have a television. Because, you know, in case I want to sit down in my recliner and watch television. Miscellaneous stuff. Again, various cards, data cards for Battlefleet Gothic. Which is actually pretty cool. Some soccer cards because I like... I like soccer, I'm a Tottenham Hotspur fan, my heresy novels, Tom Clancy novels, more rule books and things. Uh, we've got more books and stuff there. A lot more ultramarine stuff on those shelves from scale models. Uh, converted vulture. This is the Eastern Abyss, as I call it. Again, just storage and boxes. <clears throat> we've got the Adepticon badges for my wife and I. I've got mine from every year that I've been, some work badges. Fenway Park, towel, 
because I was Red Sox fan occasionally, but I kind of, I don't know, don't follow baseball a whole lot anymore. Um, got the gun safe. Um, back over here is where I keep the heater for when it gets cold. And then I got my two battle foam bags. Tottenham Hotspur flag, because again, I am a Spurs fan. And then down the stairs, I've kind of got some prints on the wall. Stan Stokes print, which um, is pretty cool. And then, of course, we've got the cardboard Thunderbolt from the launch of Aeronautica Imperialis back in 2018. A friend of mine actually got this from the manager of our local GW store. So I've been hanging that up ever since. That's, that's a pretty cool piece to have. And then from there, we're back over to the bench. So air conditioner, got to have the air conditioner. Take a quick look back around. Mediocre Modeling Studios. Well, folks, I hope you enjoyed that little tour of my little area, my man cave, my escape, my, my work area. Um, yeah, so again, I do live in a 114-year-old house now in the central Midwest, So, and it is not, there's no HVAC in, in this attic, which is not at all uncommon for houses of this age in this region because when they were built, HVAC wasn't really so much of a thing, and now with uh, forced air heaters and air conditioning and all that stuff, I mean, it takes a lot to retrofit them. So that's why I've got the heater for the wintertime, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> and the air conditioner for the summertime. It doesn't get that cold. I mean, like maybe into the 60s, even if it's like negative 10 outside, negative 20. But it gets stiflingly hot in the summertime. So having an air conditioner in, and, you know, I've got a couple of fans that also I will have running um, when I'm up here just to keep it more comfortable. Um, I don't run the air conditioner. Basically, I get home from work, run up here, turn on the air conditioner, go back downstairs, and an hour or two later, it's a little bit more comfortable. <laughs> One thing that I did I did kind of neglect to show off is something I got for Christmas, which is actually the shop apron that my wife uh, got for me off Etsy. Um, it is from a company called Under NY Sky. I believe you can find them on Etsy. I think they might have their own website, but it is. I'm really glad that I that I have this now because it makes one. It keeps my clothes a lot cleaner. It's got a lot of really nice pockets, so I keep pens and pencils up here. My measuring tools that I'm always misplacing. I keep a flashlight for when things fall uh, into the grips of the carpet monster. And I think there's some pockets uh, further down here. You can see here that I actually keep clamps in because I can never seem to find clamps when I need them. So, yeah, this thing is really awesome. I am so, so happy that, uh, that I was given this as a Christmas present. And definitely something I would recommend, um, especially if you're spending kind of an absurd amount of time at your workbench like I do. Um, but... Yeah, really nice thing. I am tempted to like wear it around the house just because it's awesome and keeps me from staining my clothes, which is a problem that I have. But anyway, um, yeah. So I hope you guys all enjoyed that little tour of of the work area, and we'll uh, we'll get back to some more content. Maybe we'll look at uh, maybe figure out what we're gonna do for a two hundred subscriber special in another year or so. But yeah. So until. Next time, folks, thank you very, very much for watching. And may your paints be thin, your brushes be pointy, and your dice be hot. Until next time.